it is an absolutely gorgeous day to start our last episode of geocaching the north shore of Lake Erie. This is our last day and we'll end up in Fort Erie. We started at Fort Malden in Amherstburg and we're going to end at another fort on the other end of the lake. It's been a huge journey. Come with us and we'll wrap up this leg of the journey. Yeah, because it was a big lake. Oh, look at whose honey pot. Well, not one container, but two. Nice. And a swag. Here's cricket. Trying to get the honey. And a cricket. <laughs> Somebody's having a good time. And look at the, all the geo coins here. Holy doodles. It's amazing all the uh, geo coins in this cache. And a really cool cache it is. We're going to give that one a favorite point. It's a Honeypot TB Hotel. I'm going to take a couple of uh, the geo coins with me to the meet at Fort Erie. I think we're going to be seeing some people there and quite possibly one of our patrons. The Lakeshore Road used to go through here, but years ago, part of the road was washed away, like many places are experiencing even today. And the road was closed off, but there is a trail down to the beach where our next geocache is by Moonlit Starry Night. Great spot for a geocache. What a beautiful location. Right here along the north shore of Lake Erie. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, just like clickbait, I'm pretty sure that we fell for this one because the name of this cache is called Be Sure to Stop for This Cache. I was expecting something kind of exciting. Oh, I see it. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Check that out. That's cool. Check that out. Oh, ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> you broke it. <laughs> oh, it's got a hinge. I'm not going in there. There's spiders. Right <laughs> here. Here. Well, look, it's just sitting right here. That's what the. Uh, on the, on the logs, it says you need a new log sheet. I'm like, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> There's supposed to be a, it says ammoed camo, so, or ammoed, no, camoed ammo. So I think there's supposed to be an ammo can originally, but look, there's a resident. Woo! Look at all the spider webs yeah. in there. Yeah. Right down here. Boom. So there's enough log sheet in here. There's a small log sheet inside this container. And this one, I'll just put underneath the container like that. So back it goes, and we'll put it back together. Like this. There we go. That's a good one. Oh. If you've uh, seen any of our previous videos, you know uh, my legs aren't exactly working very well. Uh, I got something wrong with my knee and something wrong with my leg. So walking is a gingerly process. And I was just walking back on the trail and slipped where I wouldn't normally have slipped. And uh, my left foot took a 
extreme bath. <laughs> and it's now full of mud, full of water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's geocaching. Yes. <laughs> we're getting a bit of a giggle as we're driving along. We're driving on Rainham Road, and the uh, Google Maps is calling, calling it. And Google Maps is calling it Rain Road. Yeah, Rain Hmm. <laughs> rain Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Rain -hoom. <laughs> <laughs> and we stopped for a 5-1, a 5 difficulty, one terrain. We think we know what it is. We have some pretty good hints, but we can't get it. We, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I know what it is, but I can't get the log. And I can't tell you why, because it's a 5 difficulty. So we're just going to have to leave it at that and put it down as a DNF, unfortunately, from the Kramer and Bears crew hid this one. So uh, we'll have to come back because uh, there's nothing I can't do and we got a schedule. I got to get to Fort Erie. So with this beautiful view, there's a geocache here, and it's called Morgan's View. It's a three, three and a half, and we're gonna go see if we can get it, and there's even a hint. Only a stone's throw away. I could be like a mile in my condition. There have been uh, several DNFs on this one, and, but it was found by some of our friends, so we, we know it might be here. I suspect it's here, it's just we can't find it, and I'm not much help because I can't get into the rocks. Like It looks so simple, but I, I just can't get down there without falling down. <laughs> so I'm not having any luck. So, yeah, so we're just going to move along. Yeah. Got places to be. Another DNF. But it's a beautiful view. Haunted Hopkins Tomb. <laughs> That's a good one. Nice little spot in the tree, right by Hopkins Tomb. Don't see no ghosts here. Better get signed in before they appear. Finally, we get a find. And we've now entered the Niagara region, so we're getting closer as we approach Fort Erie. We've got Port Colborne coming up, and then uh, we're gonna take a little break in my hometown of Ridgeway. Let's get this bait back. Cut, two suckers grew up. Well, that's not something you see every day. <laughs> a, uh, a tree growing inside a yellow tube. <laughs> <laughs> so we've made it to Port Colburn, and now we're doing the Lock 8 Adventure Lab. And if you've never had a chance to see the Welland Canal, and this series of locks, oh, you should drop by if you're able. But for now, let's see if we can give you a look. So this is lock number eight, and it's the last lock before you enter Lake Erie from Lake Ontario. On either side of this lock is a bridge called the Bascule Bridge, and they lift up kind of like a jackknife. It just kind of lifts up. So the bridges are down, the boats can't get in or out. So once the boat is in and either up to go into Lake Erie, the bridge at the end, south end, will open up and then the, the boat can go out into the lake. All 
our destination has brought us once again to another cemetery and I'm limping along to the final location of this cache and this one is a regular with a one two and a half rating and people are coming here to get it for fizzy grids apparently That's a bug. Spiders. Yeah, it was stuck. <laughs> Another one in the books. Yep, we're getting closer to our destination of Fort Erie. It's getting close. Yes, getting close. I'm down on the other side, and I think I see it. And I think... It's one of the geocaches that we gave him from Cache's Corner Store monthly subscription. Pretty cool. Yeah, there we go, look at that. Boom. Yeah, there we go, look at that. That's awesome. This cache is called Wash Ashore and was placed by one of our patrons, Alex Mary, and we did a video about his birthday and we, as we were unwrapping one of Cashers Corner Store uh, monthly mystery bags. So here we go, and uh, that's coming up soon. We're at Brimstrom Brewery, which used to be a church. Yeah, I never went here, but uh, it's a cool looking place now. <laughs> We'll give you a little tour of my hometown, just a short little video, because coming up is Fort Erie. It's the next town over. And actually, Ridgeway is part of the town of Fort Erie, so stay tuned. And this is the house that I grew up in, way long time ago. And we made it all the way to Fort Erie, we'll tell you about that in a moment, but we have some people waiting for us to show up all day on this episode. So, here, tell us who you are. Well, I'm Laura, but our geocaching name is Cody Lee Williams. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm Amy, and my geocaching name is Alex Mary. And Alex and Amy are patrons of ours for Cash Canada, and it's so awesome to meet them finally. Yes. Yeah, Except nice. Alex is not here. No. Yeah, yeah. no, he's not so. feeling well. Oh. So we'll have to say hello, Alex. It was we're sorry hello. we missed you. We'll see you again because you know uh, we we go everywhere. So we'll see you at some point. <laughs> we'll be yeah. around again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ontario's not very big. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Fort Erie, like Fort Malden in Amherstburg, was involved in the War of 1812. But unlike Fort Malden, Erie was significantly engaged and saw much action. The fort had been captured by the Americans in July 1814, and the British were determined to get it back. The siege in Fort Erie in August and September was one of the last engagements of the war. The Americans successfully defended the fort against a British army. During the siege, the British suffered high casualties in a failed storming attempt when the powder magazine exploded. The fort remains today as an example of those times past when we were not such good friends. Well, we made it to Fort Erie. It's just over my shoulder. And we had some people waiting to visit us when we got here. It's fantastic. So it was really fun to have somebody waiting for us to greet us at the oh, end yeah. of our episode and the end of our journey. It's been quite a long track. Yeah. yeah, and this is it. This is episode eight. We were all done. And we've made it all the way here from Fort Malden. To Fort Erie. Yeah, geocaching along the north shore of Lake Erie. On live video, London Westy talked about answering questions for a contest. 
And I mentioned on this episode, we'll be giving the final two questions for you to answer. Now, in order to get the other questions, you have to go to uh, the link right up here and watch that video. That's where all of the questions will be listed. You won't find them written out anywhere. You've got to watch the video. And then you have until Saturday at noon on August 28th to send in the answers. And make sure you email them to londonwesty at gmail.com. The instructions for that will be in the description for this episode below. Now, what questions do we have? We had one. Can you remember what they were? We were, we were cruising along and we thought, oh, that would be a really good question. So the first question for episode eight was when we were driving on the highway, Google Maps was having such a hard time trying to say something. So let us know what the name of the street was that Google Maps mispronounced. Yes. The second question is the number of the lock that we visited for the Adventure Lab in Port Colborne. Those are all the questions. Send us in the answers for yep. August 28th by noon. And you could win. Keep watching. There's more caches to be found. Yep. Where will geocaching take you?